Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Rico's Garage. Today we're going to address something that many of you have reached out to me in the comments. And that is mounting the intercooler and the radiator to the square body core support. Many of you reached out to me wanting to see that video, so today is the day we're going to make that video. Now I do have a confession to make. If you look back at our earlier videos, there was a video where I started to fit this stuff into a core support. Throw a link up here, just in case you missed it. In that video, we took the front end from an 89 GMC Jimmy and converted this truck to the mini quad front end. This truck is an 82, which originally had the ugly ass single headlight, turn signals in the bumper, that was exclusive to 81 and 82, my least favorite square body front end. So we replaced it with this. This front end you'll find on the 88 through 91 Blazer, Jimmy, and Suburbans, as well as the crew cab, one ton, pickups. In 88, when GMC changed the body style, they did not change the body style yet of the Blazer, Suburban, Jimmy. And they didn't offer a crew cab yet in the OBS trucks, which is 88 to 98. So, they still kept the square bodies in production for those, and they changed this front end to make it look more modern. I just, I just happened to like this front end, so I changed to this. Anyway, we tore that donor front end down out in the driveway, brought the parts in that we were going to use, replaced that front fender because it was damaged, and started to mount the radiator and intercooler needed for the diesel swap. However, in that video, we noticed that the core support was junk. Not at all worth using at all. In fact, if we were building a show truck, the fender and the inner fender wouldn't even be good. But, this is a work truck. Those will be just fine, other than it's the wrong color, but we'll, we'll address that down the road someday, maybe. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. But the core support was rotted and junk. No big deal. The aftermarket makes plenty of parts for these trucks. We'll just order a new core support. Well, thanks to the virus that shut everything down, that part was on back order. We also needed the billet tappet cover at the same time. If you watch that video, which I'll throw you a link up there, then you would have seen that we got the billet tappet cover and the core support at the same time. They were both on back order for a long time, held this project up. But we got them, I previewed the new core support we was going to use. After I shot the billet tappet cover video, I went into working on the core support. I did a whole video on modifying the core support and putting everything on the truck because, you know, naturally we wanted to do all the tappet cover work with the doghouse off. Well, there's a problem. When you let the dumb mechanic be not only the mechanic, but the host, the producer, the camera guy, in the editing department, somewhere in all those steps, that guy messed up. And when the editor pulled the camera out of the card and went to go edit, there was nothing there. But enough of you have reached out watching videos on this truck that you need to see that for your project. So I'm going to do the best that we can. I'm going to tear this grill and headlight surrounds down off, show you everything on this side of the core support, as well as we'll light up the inside, light up down there, and I'll try to show you how we've done everything the best that we can. I'll do it the best we can. I apologize on the screw up on the original video, but those things happen. So with that being said, cue the time lapse, get some tools get this part and show you how we put this second gen radiator intercooler into a square body pickup so you can get it done on your project. It helps if you remove all of the bolts. There's your tech tip for the day. Maybe a little out of sequence, but we'll start here with the front. Now, before we get into this, I want to mention something. This is the most difficult front end to do this conversion on. The reason being, 
with these mini quad headlights, you lose a lot of this center section room. So, in losing that much room, everything gets really tight. What most guys will do, like with the older square bodies, actual square bodies, not the aerial front ends they called this one, which would be 73 to 79, they only had a single headlight and a marker light. So many of those guys will actually cut the core support to fit the Dodge intercooler, move it more far forward, and have the intercooler and the AC condenser out here, and then run the Dodge radiator with a mechanical fan. We have neither one of those in this truck. We have no AC condenser, and we're running in electric fans. I don't totally blame the core support for the fan issue, because I have my engine mounted a little farther forward than, than most people do, because I absolutely refuse to cut the firewall. I wanted to maintain the factory HVAC box. In doing so, moving the engine forward, we lost the use of a mechanical fan and had to go electrics. Well, everything's a domino effect. By going with the electrics, we have no room for the AC condenser. This truck is a factory air truck. Right now, to be honest with the air conditioning, it's just not that important to me. But, however, I think I've found a way to rem remote mount a condenser, and we may do that in the future, but for now, it's just not that big of a deal. So, with that out of the way, showing you everything here in the front, you can see two 14-inch fans fit perfectly. They are hard mounted to the core support with quarter 20 bolts. Uh, up here at this top corner I did have to make a bracket to go from this fan to this fan. Not a huge deal. And the same deal over here, quarter 20 bolts. I do have them wired independently. Each one's on its own relay just in case we had a failure. We wouldn't lose both fans at one time. The only place you run into an interference problem the factory grill fits in here just fine however the hood latch I did have to notch this fan housing just a little bit to clear the safety latch on the hood latch and that's it everything else here is factory this is the inside of our engine bay as you can see factory Dodge second gen radiator intercooler is right down inside here. I apologize, I'm doing the best I can with lighting. But you can see, there's the intercooler right there, tucked in front of the radiator. This cast bracket right here is how Dodge mounts the intercooler to the core support of the second gen Dodge. They just come off the top right here with these two brackets. And all I did I think that pointer is screwing you more than it's doing anything. All I did was right here oblong this hole a little bit more towards the intercooler. Man, I wish that camera could get in there better. Okay, follow the magnetic pickup tool here. Here is the intercooler, and you can see Dodge uses a bracket, the wing, a little wing, if you will, that comes right off the side of the intercooler and would mount to the core support on the second gen Dodge truck. What I did, because we're so tight with the headlight, there's, there's the headlight plug right there to give you an idea how close we are. I took and shortened this bracket and then oblong the slot a little farther, as far in as I could get it close to this gusset. With that bracket oblonged, that is the factory cushion for the second gen Dodge. I just drilled a hole in the core support, put a half inch bolt, we have a spacer between the core support and the bushing, the factory bushing, and then a nut and washer. I did the same thing on both sides. I actually got ahead of myself. I shouldn't have showed you the intercooler mount just yet. If you refer back to 
that first video, you would know right here is the factory body mount, and there's some bracing that runs up and down this core support. Well, you have to take those braces out. They're on the inside. And then doing so, you have to mount your body bolt upside down. You actually have to run it with the nut on the bottom. Drop your bolt down through and that bolts the course bolts the core support to the frame. Hopefully that I'm explaining that good enough. When you have those out of the way, that lets the intercooler set up against the core support. There's a little shelf right about where this hole is that runs the whole length of the bottom of the core support. And the Dodge intercooler has two pegs that stick down off of the bottom of it. Take you an inch and a quarter hole saw and drill two holes to allow those pegs to sit down into the core support. You will also have to cut a hole right where your body bolt goes so you can drop it down and clear the intercooler. So once you have that dropped in place, that's it for the bottom. Just two pegs inside the hole. Then you can uh, fabricate those top brackets like I showed you. That pretty much covers the intercooler. Now for the radiator, we let the bottom cushions we let the bottom sit in the factory cushions off the second gen core support. And then up top, we just simply drilled two holes and put some uh, quarter 20 helicoils. Sorry, I'm doing the best I can here. Quarter 20 bolt right through the top mount, the factory Dodge mount, into some helicoils onto the the core support. Like I said, on this truck, we do not have room for a mechanical fan. We were, however, able to use the factory upper radiator hose off of a 90, 95 Dodge Ram. We use the factory lower hose as well. Running the dual batteries and the Dodge radiator, we had no room for either style factory puke tank. So we just picked up a cheapie at the auto parts store, mounted it right there. As far as intercooler tubes, this is all factory Dodge second gen boots, air horn. I did, with my engine placement and everything, have to shorten up these tubes I just simply cut cut them dead in half cut I believe an inch and a half out of them and weld them back together they are steel they do weld nicely and that's pretty much it same deal on the uh, hot side Cut it down, welded it back together, and that's it. So that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, if you are doing this on a 73 to 79 square body, or even an 81 to 87 front end, you're going to have more room than what I had on this mini quad. But you know, the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, it's your vehicle. Build it how you want it. But all I'm doing is just throwing out some ideas, showing you how I did it. I'm not going to sit there and tell you my way is the right way or the wrong way. It's just the way that I did it. So maybe these ideas can help you with your project. And uh, that's really what this is all about. So 
I'm gonna get this put back together who knows may want to drive it to work tomorrow you never know at any rate I hope this helped you I know it wasn't the best some of you were really wanting to see a step-by-step how-to and I just don't have the means to do that right now I did the best I could I'm hoping it worked for you I hope it gave you some ideas to keep your project going and if not like I said drop a comment down below I'll answer any questions you got now for the next video it's going to take some legwork but I am going to go through and show you how to wire everything to make this Cummins engine work in the square body I've done different segments on different pieces but some of you want to see a whole overview of it I'm going to do that do that do some more third grade artwork show you some wiring diagrams show you everything on the truck so you can get to wire in your project and then it's time to go drive this bad girl but I'm only going to do that if the weather's nice yes it is a work truck no it's not a show truck but this thing's an 82 with very little rust which is very rare here in Indiana and I'm not going to take it out and give it a salt bath if I can help it so one day it's going to be nice and warm out there and dry we'll take this big girl for a, for a drive and then wheeling season comes show you how this thing does as a tow rig and if it actually met our expectations I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's gonna do all right but for now get out in the shop work on your project I'm gonna put mine back together and I'll catch you on the next one later <laughs>